makers and creatives. I'm Katherine Harris with Sheer Stitchery. And this week, I thought I would do a pattern review as well as a sew along for the Sew a Little Seam Ollie Bomber Jacket. So let's get into it. So we're going to start with the welt pockets. So we are going to place our interfacing on the wrong side of our bodice fabric, and then we're going to transfer the markings where our welt pocket is going to be from the pattern. And then you're going to place the pocket bag, ensuring that the pocket bag is facing downwards, and you're going to match those two markings with right sides together. And so I'm just going in and I'm altering this line just slightly because it didn't match up perfectly. And then I am going to pin at the top and the bottom of the lines here. This is a new way to do welt pockets as well. It's one that I traditionally don't do, so I actually really enjoyed this. Then we're going to stitch going down the one side of that line, making sure you backstitch at the start and the end. So once that is all done, then we are going to draw a line on the other side of our pocket bag. And then you are going to match this up with the raw edges. And then I am just going to draw a horizontal line connecting those two vertical lines here. Then I'm going to pin that second pocket bag in place and do make sure that that pocket bag is placed so that the it goes down and it matches up with the other one nicely. Now that it's stitched, I'm just going to pull it out of the way with these pattern weights and I've just drawn here how we're going to cut it out. So I'm removing the pattern weights on the one side of the pocket bag and getting out my quilting ruler because I'm going to use my rotary cutter to cut a straight line starting and stopping where the points of those triangles are. Now at those points of the triangles, we are going to create the dog ears and these are going to snip to the corners of where our stitching lines are, but we're not going to go through that stitching line. So this is starting to look like more of a regular welt pocket. Next, we are going to flip these to the wrong side here. And then we are going to pop on over to our pressing station. And I like to cover with an organza silk press cloth just to protect this fabric because it is a knit and it doesn't like to press very well. So I'm using a decent amount of steam just to kind of set that ponty knit in place. And then we are going to fold over the one side of the pocket bag here. So we are just going to flip that over and we're going to give it a nice good press to set that stitch. Then we're going to fold it back in on itself, matching up where that opening is. And so you're going to match that perfectly and then you're going to press that in place. And this is what is going to be visible from the right side of the fabric showing that pocket welt. So the one that has that interfacing is the one that we stitch over. Next, we're going to fold them together and then we need to stitch down these triangles here. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to take your fabric and you are going to flip it over so that we can easily pin it. So this is the front of it. So you can see our welt looks quite nice. Then we're going to flip up the corner here. I'm just going to put a pin in place so that nothing moves around. And then we are going to stitch down these triangles at the sewing machine. So you're just going to stitch right down that area. So you can see I've got them stitched. Now we can stitch the rest of our pocket bag. So I decided to serge it just to finish the ends nicely. And this is what our pocket will look like. Now on to the shoulder seams. So we are going to place the right sides together on the shoulder seams for both the front and the back of our bomber jacket. And we're going to pin that in place. And as simply as it sounds, we are then going to pop on over to our sewing machine or our serger, and we are going to finish those seams. So once they are all done, it should look a little something like this. And now onto the sleeves. And we are going to match up the double notches as well as the single notch to that center shoulder seam and then the single notch. That way you have your sleeves pointed in the correct direction. I actually really love this method of setting in sleeves. So you don't actually have to set them in. You can do the side seam all in one fell swoop and it just matches everything up so much nicer. 
So just pin in here and everything should fit nicely that you shouldn't have to ease anything into the fabric. And then you're going to take it over to your sewing machine and serger and you're going to stitch this in place. And just get that seam stitched. And now we can move on to sewing these side seams here. So with this, we are going to make sure that we're nesting those seams in the shoulder just to reduce the amount of bulk. And then we're just going to pin going all down the side of the arm as well as the side seam here. Now on to the bottom band. So with the bottom band, we are just going to clip here to mark our center point of the bottom band. Then I'm flipping it one more time in half to quarter it, and I'm just snipping the top and the bottom to mark my quarter points on my bottom band. Now this is very important to make sure that we have the bottom band installed with the correct amount of gathering because the bottom band is smaller than the jacket bodice. Next, I am going to be marking the halfway point on the bottom band here, and I'm just using some chalk, but you could also snip that as well to mark where the center comes. Now, once that is all done, we are going to match the short ends together. And I'm just snipping that just for a little added um, security in there. Now we are going to match our bottom band to our bomber jacket front piece. And we're matching this to the jacket bodice. So we're going to match the center back seam first. And I like to use clips because this is a knit. They just go a little bit better than pins. Then we're going to match the next quarter notch to the side seam. And then you're going to match the end to either of the ends and then distribute the remaining amount of fabric that is on your jacket bodice in between on that bottom band seam. So you're going to be stretching not the bottom band, but the jacket itself so that it kind of gathers and cinches in to create that classic bomber silhouette. So once you have this all clipped in place, you're going to stitch or serge this in place. So this is what it will look like once it is all done. Now onto the lining. So you're basically going to repeat those exact same steps on the lining to attach the shoulder seams, side seams, and the sleeves. Now onto the sleeve cuffs. So for the sleeve cuffs, we are going to fold it in half and then we are going to stitch or serge going down the center here. Then we're going to fold it in half as so to create the cuff. And remember, wrong sides are together so that you only have right sides facing out. Next, we are going to attach this cuff to our main jacket. So we are going to place it so that the raw edges are facing each other and right sides are together. I like to match up the seam on the cuff with the bottom seam on my sleeve. Then I am just distributing the fabric around the cuff to ensure that I have an even distribution pinned all the way around. Then I'm going to pop on over to my serger and serge it in place. And once it's done, it will look something like this. Now with a circle, when you serge it, you can't leave the tail as is. You can't just cut it off because it will unravel. You need to secure those serger tails. So what I like to do is just clip the end and take a darning needle, thread that needle through. And then once it is threaded through, I am going to weave that tail back in on itself through those serger stitches just to lock that stitch in place. And now we can trim the tails. And now we can move on to the zipper installation. So I've got two zippers here that I ordered on my second go around. One is a metal zipper and one is a pure black zipper, both of which are reversible because this is a reversible jacket. I think I really like the way that the gold looks with this fabric. So I am going to do the gold zipper. Now we're going to place a zipper face down on the right side of our main jacket piece. And if you're using a non-reversible jacket, this installation would be the exact same. And then you're going to match the bottom of the zipper to that halfway notch that we made on our bottom band before that we clipped in. And then we are just going to stitch this in place. I am just pinning and make sure when you're at the top, you move it down the amount that the seam allowance is, especially if you have a metal zipper because you will break a needle stitching that collar in place. So next I am just trying to move the zipper head over and my zipper head is actually too large. So I actually had to 
take out my needle and move my presser foot away. And then I'm just back stitching here and continuing on with my stitches. So if you have that, that is how you get past that. So now that we have that installed on the one side, we are going to repeat these steps exactly on the other side, matching up exactly where we have the top of our jacket because we don't want the top of our jacket to be slightly uneven. And don't forget to ensure that you are away from the seam allowance on the top of that zipper stop. And then just stitch that in place. And now we have our zipper installed on our main jacket. Now onto the collar. So we are going to attach the collar and I've done this by dividing the collar into quarters as well. So I've marked the center of my collar as well as the quarter points on my collar. And I am just going to match up the center back and then the quarter points match up to the shoulder seams. And then when we get to the edge of the collar, we are just going to fold that under just slightly so that we have a nice finished edge here. So I'm folding it inside itself. So I'm not folding it under to one side because this is a reversible jacket. You want to fold it into the collar to sandwich those in between that seam. And then I am just going to continue to pin the rest of the collar onto the collar of our bomber jacket. Then pop on over to the sewing machine and stitch it in place. Next is the lining. So with the lining, we are going to attach this first along the bottom band. So right now I am just marking my quarter points. So I'm folding it in half to mark that halfway point and I'm just clipping right there. And our side seams will mark the other quarter points on here. Now I've already quarter pointed our bottom band. So I'm going to match up that center back seam and then I am going to match up the two side seams with the other quarter points on the bottom band. And then I will continue to distribute that fabric evenly between them because as I had mentioned before, the jacket is larger than the bottom band. So you will have to stretch that bottom band just slightly. And once you have it all pinned and in place, then we can pop on over to our overlocker and stitch it in place. But before we do, we need to leave some room to turn our jacket. So I'm just marking several inches to create an opening where we will turn the jacket. And so we're going to just stitch along here, leaving that opening. And you can see I've got it left open, as you can see. The next thing that we are going to do here is we are going to stitch up the sides of the jacket. So we're going to match up where the bottom band meets because we want it to be the same on both the front and the back when we reverse it. And then I am going to just continue pinning up to the top, matching up our fabrics, sandwiching the zipper in between. So we do have right sides together and we're sandwiching that zipper piece in between. And then we're going to stitch along here and we're going to do that for both sides being careful of that zipper head that you may have to move out of the way. Once that is done, then we are going to stitch the collar in place. So we're going to sandwich the collar in between the two right sides of our lining and our main fabric bomber jacket. And I am just pinning this in place. And I'm also going to mark where the top of that metal zipper is because I don't want my needle to hit that. So I mark it on either end just to be very cautious. Now I did move it down the amount of the seam allowance, but I just like to know where it is when I'm stitching so I don't break a needle knock on wood. So let's get that stitched. Now onto the lining sleeve attachment. So with this, we have our lining all attached in the bottom and the collar. Now we just need to attach the sleeves. So I'm just making sure that my sleeves are not twisted. And then I am going to match up the bottom seam with the bottom seam on the other sleeve. And then I'm going to sandwich it together, right sides together along the cuff here. And so we're actually going to create almost like a loop here with the sleeves and we're just pinning it along the exact same seam that we stitched the cuff on originally and then you can go in and stitch that over again and you can serge it if you like and so this is what it will look like a nice big loop now onto some of the finishing touches so the next thing we need to do you remember that hole we need to flip our jacket right side out so i'm just flipping it right side out here and pushing the sleeves in where they need to go. And now we've got a bit of a hole that we need to clean up here. 
So we are just going to press that under and I have decided to hand stitch this with a ladder stitch. I will leave a link to a ladder stitch tutorial if you'd like a bit more in-depth detail on how to do this. That being said, you could also stitch it closed with your machine if you like, but the stitching will be visible. So next I am going to top stitch along the bottom band and I am just moving the seam allowances in towards that bottom band and then I am pinning right here and I'm making sure that I'm pinning at the very top where the band meets my fabric on both sides because I don't want it to be twisted or slightly askew when I am stitching here. So I am just making sure everything lines up perfectly. And if you pin it like this, you should have everything lined up beautifully when you go to do your top stitching. And then I am going to pop on over to my sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch all along this bottom band. And it will look something like this. Don't forget to change your bobbin thread if you have a contrasting color as your lining here. And then what you can also do is you can top stitch along where the zipper is just to kind of hold everything in place. I decided not to do this, but you totally can do it. So now that we have the bomber jacket all stitched up, I thought I would go through my thoughts on the pattern and do a quick review. So overall, fit is absolutely lovely. Uh, sleeves are a bit long, so you can see that they kind of come down to my fingertips, but in a jacket, I actually really like that because if I get a little colder, then I can just pull my hands into my jacket. So I see that as a positive. Now, one thing to mention, it does mention that on the smallest size calls for a 22 inch zipper and the larger sizes call for a 24 inch zipper. Now, I didn't make the smallest size, but I made the one step up from that. And the 22, the 24 inch zipper was much too large for this jacket. So I actually had to order a second 22 inch zipper so that it would fit nicely in here. And other than that, that was pretty much the only issue that I had with the pattern. One thing I would mention though, is when you are getting a zipper to make sure you get the reversible zipper because bonus, this jacket is reversible. So if you want it to be reversible, make sure you get that reversible zipper head. And I think that it's really worth it and works fantastic for travel wear. So if you are going to be going somewhere, you don't have to pack two coats. You can actually get two different types of outfits out of the same jacket. And it's perfect for a capsule wardrobe where you are really trying to pare down what you have in your wardrobe. Now, the next thing to note when you are cutting out the pieces is the fabric that is used for the pocket bag is also folded in on itself to create the welt in the pocket. So there isn't a separate piece for the welt, meaning whatever your pocket inside is or your pocket bag is, that is going to be the fabric that is on the outside welt of your pocket here. Now, I absolutely love the fact that it's contrasting but if you want it to match, just be aware of that when you're cutting out your fabric pieces. Now, the last thing that I wanted to mention here is the fact that it gives you yardage for when you're cutting out big lengths of fabric for the cuffs and the neckband here. That being said, if you wanted to go for some fancy ribbing, like the ones that have the really cute stripes on them, I did some calculating with the pattern pieces and you're going to need about half a meter of that to do both the collar as well as both of the cuffs and the bottom cuff here. Last but not least, I wanted to talk about the fit of the garment. It fits quite nicely. It's got more of a baggier fit, which is good for a jacket. Now the sleeves are slightly long and overall I think it hits quite nicely and is rather flattering and I would see myself making this again. Now, if you are looking at making this as well, there's also a free download add-on to create a kangaroo pouch front pocket, as well as a hoodie, as opposed to the bomber jacket style. So you can get another look out of this exact same pattern. So I would encourage you to check out the website and take a look at that. 
Now, if you're new here and you enjoyed this video, do consider subscribing and smashing that notification bell so you don't miss any video. And if you enjoyed this video, do give it a big thumbs up. Until next time, makers, let's get our sospiration on. Bum, bum.